Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, September 20th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down this slate of games. We got three college football games on slate. So three pack of CFB coming your way. And then we got MLB on the diamond as well. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB college football picks are for today. Smash that like button. If you're liking the content guys, it helps out the algorithm. I'll be in the comments below chiming in as well as we're starting off College football Friday night lights here, 7.30 Eastern time. Stanford and Syracuse leading us off as we're seeing the orange minus eight and a hook as the home favorite, 56 and a half being the total. Both teams off of a buy, so I don't think the travel cross country for Stanford is going to affect them too much. Really, guys, I'm going after this from a total standpoint. We get Stanford playing a lot faster. This isn't the Stanford of old. When you look at their numbers, seconds per snap so far early in the season, they're number 15 in the country, going very up-tempo, 27 and 41 points scored in their first two games. They're up against the Syracuse team, 2-0 and out the gate, 2-0 and at home. They're playing in a dome, fast track here. Syracuse coming off of that big win against Georgia Tech, two weeks ago 30 plus in both of their games so far guys i think we get into the 60s here starting off stanford in syracuse over 60 uh 56 and a half and i th- i do think it gets into the 60s guys next game up heading to the big 10 eight o'clock eastern start time here it's illinois and nebraska 42 and a hook being the total nebraska minus seven and a hook or minus eight right now Depending where you're shopping, it's kind of a split line. I'm talking it's 7 a.m. Pacific here on Friday. Both teams 3-0 out the gate, 3-0 against the spread. Also 0-3 to the under. So watch out here. We do see a low total, 42 in the hook. I think it's a tricky one totals-wise. I like it more from the side. couple reasons why. Illinois, yes, good start to the season. But they... Not a whole lot on that resume in terms of meat on the bone, strength of schedule. The one game they did play out the gate against Kansas, they did win it 23 to 17, but they benefited from turnovers. Kansas quarterback Daniels did not play well. Now, you got to give some credit to to, to Illinois defense, but they did kind of uh, uh, get an edge due to turnovers. And I can't always think you can count on that in the sport of football. Plus, they're up against a really good Nebraska team out the gate under head coach Matt Rule. Who's, he's doing a great job there in Lincoln. Their defense, just six points a game. They played Colorado, you know, Coach Prime, that offense, only letting up 10 points to the Buffs. I, I, I think they get this one, guys. I don't love the hook on the seven, but I think it's Nebraska by, uh, by more than a touchdown. So I would lay it with the Cornhuskers. We got the nightcap in college football late night on the West Coast. West Coast matchup here, San Jose State and Washington State. We are seeing the Cougars minus 12 or minus 12 and a half at home, 55 being the total. Not a lot of people probably uh, know a lot about San Jose State out the gate, but the Spartans get uh, Ken Niamatololo, the head coach from Navy. Um, they played well, 3-0, 3-0 against the spread so far this season. Really, guys, I think we get an edge here as a better going back to the total. Two of their first three games, actually their last two games against Kennesaw State and Air Force, two option attack offenses, option principles there, playing slow offense. So I think that that kind of brings in the fact because of who their opponents are playing that slower offense, I think there's actually value in betting the Spartans towards the over. Now they're up against the Cougars here, Washington State off of that big Apple Cup win over Washington. One thing I noticed there, because spot-wise, short week off of that big win, I don't want to lay double digits here with Washington State. Instead, something I took away from that Apple Cup, their quarterback, John Matier, a dual-threat guy, he looks real good. 245 yards passing against Washington, 60-plus yards rushing. He can make things happen with his feet. He actually punched it in the end zone twice with two rush TDs. I think there's more points here, guys. I think this is a Friday night of points outside of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. I would go with San Jose State and Washington State up and over the 55. That's what we're doing here for the show. So it's SJSU, Washington State over 55 in the nightcap for college football. We got baseball coming your way, guys. A reminder, check out wagertalk.com, experts page, Drew Martin. We got half off Friday, all plays discounted today so you can get saturday's plays sunday's plays all of them half price 50 percent off 
today. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys. Your your picks for this weekend, all is welcome. I'll be in there chiming away in the comments below. All right, talking on the diamond here off of yesterday's uh, show where we went two and three minus one unit. We did hit the Blue Jays at the plus price, which helps out in terms of the VIG, but still minus one unit on yesterday's show, looking to be in bounce back mode here. We're heading to Fenway for uh, the start of MLB. David Festa in the Minnesota Twins up against the Boston Red Sox and Richard Fitz. Total of nine, minus 105. Pick the winner on each side. It's two 24-year-old rookies going at it. David Festa, the 13th round in 2021. He's He's been a surprise in MLB. He's been really good since being recalled from the minors. He's got a 3.8 ERA, 3-3 FIP, 58 to 18 strikeout to walk ratio, only 35 hits and 45 innings pitch since being recalled. I'm looking to bet on Festa. That's what I have in my notes. Now he's up against Fitz here, 24-year-old rookie out of Auburn. The thing I take away is, Fitz was actually a bullpen arm in Auburn. It's interesting. Now he's in Major League Baseball making his third start. So something to watch here. He's got good numbers. His last time out against the Yankees was a great start. But his only start in Fenway was against the White Sox. He gave up six hits, two runs in that one. So through his first two starts here, Fitz is actually 0-2 on the mound. Or I should say the Red Sox are 0-2 when he started. Minus 3.7 units because they lost that one against the White Sox. Overall, guys, uh, Boston now under 500 on the season. We get Minnesota fighting for a playoff spot, 80 and 73. I'm going with Minnesota Twins and pick the winner. Minus 105, it's the Twins over the Red Sox. Next one up, 8 o'clock Eastern hour. It's the Arizona Diamondbacks, Milwaukee Brewers. Colin Ray going for the Brew Crew. Zach Gallen for the Diamondbacks. Minus 120, that's Arizona as the road favorite. Total of eight. This is game two of the series. Interesting handicap, kind of unique here, where we get one starter, Zach Gallen, back-to-back starts against Milwaukee, whereas Colin Ray not in that same situation against Arizona. I like fading starting pitchers, seeing the same lineup that second time around, particularly if they didn't dominate him the first time. And he, he didn't do so. He gave up six hits, three earned last time out against the Brewers. And Colin Ray, he did not face Arizona his last time. He actually had a save. He went two innings against the uh, Phillies. His velocity looked up. He was throwing 95 miles per hour. So uh, all of that, I think the Brewers here, guys, a little bit underrated at home. I think we get the home dog barking. 88 win, first place Brewers, plus 110. It's the home dog at the plus price over the Diamondbacks. Got one game here. Left 7-10 Eastern time. It's the Atlanta Braves and the Miami Marlins. Charlie Morton on the hill for the Bravos. Volante Belozo going for the fish. Atlanta minus 200 road favorites. But we're actually jumping on this, guys. Atlanta minus the run line. So it's minus one and a half, minus 120. Charlie Morton back-to-back starts. Six-plus innings, only one earned run. He had six-plus Ks in each of those. That's a, a, including a start against the Dodgers. Last time against the Fish, six innings, zero earned, blanking him. Like this guy, especially in this matchup. He's up against Belozo. I have fading uh, the 24-year-old Mexican-born pitcher. He's given up over and hit an inning at home, and he had a 5 fit last time out against this Braves lineup facing him. This is a Marlins team that's 56 and 97 on the season. They're heading towards over 100 losses for the year. They've lost two straight, getting outscored 28-8 to eight run differential, giving up, what, that 50th home run to Shohei Otani. Um, they've lost five of six, lost eight of ten. They've lost the last two times. Belozo's taken the hill. All of that, guys, it's the Atlanta Braves by margin here. Lay the run line, minus one and a half, minus 120. In recap, we're on the Brewers, home dog barking, plus 110. Minnesota Twins with David Festa. As the starter, pick the winner, minus 105 on the Twins. College football at San Jose State, Washington State, up and over 55. We're on Nebraska over Illinois, minus 7 in the hook. And we're on Stanford and Syracuse to start us off here, guys. 56 and a half, go up and over in the Dome. Drew Martin, check it out for Friday. We'll be back early with Saturday. Come back and join us for the college football Saturday special. Until then, thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button. Help me out. Comment below, guys. You want to see an NFL show on Sunday? Let me know. We can make that happen. Hey, other than that, enjoy your Friday night. Cash those tickets.